California, we're about to launch upon a very regulated market. So we've had medical cannabis for the last over 20 years. And if you've been cultivating cannabis in the state of California, um, hopefully you've been operating as a nonprofit collective. And there is a particular business, corporate, organizational structure and kind of financial model that one needs to follow. So um, the first thing that I always recommend to folks who are growers, people are operating under this nonprofit collective model. Um, why that matters is because none of this is fully regulated today. None of this, these businesses are not fully legalized commercial cannabis activity. That doesn't really launch until January 1st, 2018. And even, um, even on that date, we're still under a transitionary period. So I sort of think about it like, um, businesses are operating, growers are operating in a quasi-legal environment where your legality is hingent upon are you this not-for-profit collective cooperative sort of business or entity structure which creates a solid sort of step one foundation. So step one, get compliant now. Make sure that your operations are in order now so that one can comfortably interface with their local county and various other agencies and departments, both on a local and state level, to pursue what is ultimately a state license. So visually, it's sort of like we're going on, we're, you're going down a road, you're taking a path. Really, you're not on any sort of, you know, it's as if you're out in the desert and you're just, we've been just sort of driving around and once in a while you see like, you see dirt roads and that's today where you want to be is if you're a grower envisioning what type of cultivation state license do i want and so maybe going on the california department of food and ag website and there's cal cannabis licensing which is that agency and looking and saying okay i'm an outdoor grower my canopy size i would like it to be this amount or is some amount okay i want that type of state license at the end of the day, that's where I want to land at some point. And this collective to mo model that I've been operating under today, this nonprofit collective model sunsets, meaning you need to have your nonprofit collective, you need to actually be on the commercial cannabis regulated market with that state license and local permit and everything that involves that, you know, we'll speak about. That's, that's where I need to land because a year after the state issues notice, of the first cannabis license, right? The, the state says, yep, we've issued our first official license. So maybe somewhere around 2019, 2020, you can no longer operate as just a nonprofit collective. You need to have both a local permit and a state license. So for anyone who is cultivating cannabis today in California, it really is about getting very clear on what are the steps that take takes you to that state license if you want to operate in the regulated legal market. And so it really, you know, while it's not always fun to sit down and have very involved conversations with lawyers and accountants and your business partners or yourself about the, the, this type of kind of strategic thinking in a very challenging, you know, still being firmed up set of rules and regulations from different agencies type of an environment. But those sorts of very um, intentional me like meetings uh, amongst partners or as a grower oneself, making sure, okay, I know what I need, I, I have an idea of where I wanna go, and then taking the steps to get you there is really critical. It's like, you know, when I see um, um, people who are really kind of, confused about what those next steps are the you know it's it's getting clear it's uh, yeah i guess it's trying to help get them organized and getting clear on that you know i just try to think about like really practical advice because you've got laws that are in place you have shifting laws that are still kind of being figured out and so 
you know, how does one organize, how does one plan in, in you know, these really next six months, year and a half, two years. And the best way of doing that is sitting down and figuring out what's knowable, what's not knowable, and almost backtracking. Okay, if I want that state license, then I know that I'll need to have, and that involves something with the state water board and with the Department of Fish and Wildlife and these various agencies. Oh, geez, here's, here's what's required to the CDFA that I prove in order to even apply. Gosh, it says I need to have this particular type of corporate entity. And let me read these regulations that say how I need to operate my facility, what this new track and trace system is, what the state taxes are, you know, what, oh gosh, what, what are all the taxes that are involved? Because a, a, a large major, majority of people who are cultivating cannabis in California, and certainly people that you know, we've worked with over the years, um, are, are, are not familiar with all of those state regulatory agencies and are not, you know, certainly not familiar because we've not had such a thing with, you know, what does track and trace mean? What will it mean to function in a very regulated environment? And instead of turning your head away from, I just don't want to look at that because that's all new and confusing and not what I'm used to for the last 20 years or more, instead turning and looking at it, and honestly, it takes a level of courage you know, to look at, okay, this is what I want to do. I have to take that leap and get some good information and then take, move and take those steps forward. So, you know, it really is kind of like crystallizing those steps as much as possible. And so, you know, once you think in the world of the state regulators, okay, well, you know, you've got federal law, state law, and then local, right? Cities, counties. So where's my, where's my facility located if it's an indoor grow facility or an outdoor? In what city or county in California? And there are 540 total separate local jurisdictions. So what do I need in, in my area? Well, there are 540 total municipalities in the state of California, and you'll need to have a permit from that city or county. And so in order to get that type of a permit, there are a number of items that will almost surely be required. So are you in the right zone? Is it, does the city or county require that your outdoor facility be in a particular type of ag land? Or if you're an indoor grower, is it allowable in a certain manufacturing area or not at all? And that's a challenge that many, many operators are facing and many interested operators or entrepreneurs are facing, which is, still a vast majority of these cities and counties have no pathway to permitting. They don't have their zoning rules figured out. They don't have the business permitting process figured out. And that's just the nature of being involved in an emerging industry. So on that front, what percentage of the cultivators that you work with are doing everything right as it pertains to state regulations, but are kind of going to be screwed by their local the vast majority at the moment. And the reason is most cities and counties are still in their local political process. So one of, you know, it just is honestly, by virtue of the nature of regulating a really behemoth of an industry and having a very thriving industry for the last 20 plus years, and most cities and counties, they're little political kingdoms themselves. Each of those 540 cities and counties has their own local politics and their own issues and their own ways of looking at this industry and other, other things to factor in that make it more challenging or very easy, like a desert hot springs in some of these desert cities that very much need the revenue from this industry, or established counties like Mendocino or Humboldt County who acknowledge that there's a thriving cannabis industry, or little one-offs like West Hollywood that really believes in this industry for the medical benefits, right? So you have that extreme, and then you've got cities and counties who are saying, we've had a, a very contentious relationship with this industry, or we don't know what any of this means, this is all scary. And so then, you know, you're seeing a lot of local advocacy, um, uh, you know, at city, at city council meetings, at county supervisor meetings, and a lot of folks kind of coming out of the green closet advocacy organizations saying, look, this is not scary. The state has passed a set, comprehensive set of laws with the Medical and Adult Use Cannabis Regulation and Safety Act. Don't freak out municipalities. 
you know, there are all these state agencies that will deal with the really meat of these issues. And your role, which cities and counties, this is their role, is really just to deal with zoning. So where in the city or county do you want what particular types of categories of businesses? And, you know, that manufacturing, cultivation, distribution, in what areas? And so it's, we're really in a process of education. And a lot of our clients don't have local permits. They are trying to figure out or they are in the process of applying for or through various strategies depending on the municipalities are, are moving in that direction or are in process. But there's, it's, a, it's a problem. It's one of the challenges of what we are facing right now.